a pandemic like COVID-19, it can be challenging for child protection actors to work with children and their families face to face. But we can still deliver our services remotely using technology. WhatsApp and Signal are group messaging platforms that allow us to engage with a group or encourage group members to engage with one another on a particular topic. Group chats are useful for psychosocial support activities, education, sharing key messages and raising awareness, while one-to-one -one messaging is useful for receiving feedback and complaints. Before getting started, it is important to check the privacy policy of the platform you wish to use and to understand the potential risks children face when using these platforms. They include cyberbullying, online grooming, access to potentially harmful content, and accidental or intentional sharing of images or videos of children or of personal or location data. When using these platforms for child protection work, it's best to use a dedicated phone instead of your personal phone. Now, let's take a look at the key features of WhatsApp and Signal and how we can use them safely. Before setting up a group, make sure all the people you want to add to the group are saved as contacts and that you have their consent to be added to the group. Children under 16 should be added using a parent or caregiver's contact number. And remember not to save their full name on your phone, rather use their initials or create codes. In WhatsApp, click the icon to write a new message. Click New Group, select all the contacts you wish to add to the group, and click Next. Where it says Group Subject, provide a relevant name for your group, for example, Parenting Skills Cohort 1. Click Create. Your group chat is now live. In Signal, click on the pencil icon, click New Group, select all the contacts you wish to add to the group and click Next. Provide a relevant name for your group and then click Create. Group members will need to accept an invite and will not be able to see group messages until they have done so. Now, let's look at how you can manage your group. You will be listed as the group's administrator. However, it's important to have more than one admin who can help you manage the group and address any inappropriate behavior. To do this in WhatsApp, open the group chat and click on the group name. Scroll down to participants, click the name of a colleague who will be the second admin, and then click Make Group Admin you will see the word admin next to their name. In Signal, click on the group name and scroll down to the list of members. Click on your colleague's name and then click Make Admin. You can add more admins if you need to, but make sure they all understand and agree to the responsibilities that go with facilitating and managing the group. Let's see how you can add more information to your group. In WhatsApp, you can click the camera icon to add a picture. It's best not to use something that could identify the members in your group. Rather, pick the logo of your organization or project. You can also add a group description outlining the purpose of the group. For example, discussion group for parenting skills training July to August. In Signal, click on the group name, then the camera icon and select an appropriate image. To change the group name, click Edit. Now, let's add some privacy and safeguarding settings. You'll see that WhatsApp has more options to control who can send messages and when, while Signal has more inbuilt safety features to protect the data shared in the group. In WhatsApp, click on the group name, then find Group Settings. Click Edit Group Info and then Only Admins. Now, only the group admins can change the subject, icon, and description of your group. To choose who can send messages in the group, click Send Messages and change the default setting of all participants to only admins. You should enable this setting between sessions or outside of working hours. During sessions, you can select all participants to enable all group members to send messages. In Signal, 
You can restrict who can add members and who can edit the group info. To do this, open the chart and click on the chart name. Scroll down, select who can add members and change to only admins. Do the same for those who can edit group info. When you first create a group, it's important to set some ground rules. You can do this by asking participants how they would like the group to run and what behaviors everyone should commit to. The ground rules should include setting expectations about behavior, such as not sharing personal photos, videos or data, being respectful of other group members and using appropriate language. You should also explain what participants should do if they have concerns or complaints, and you should circulate the ground rules regularly. Group admins need to monitor behavior in line with these rules and address any problems that arise. This may involve discussing the rules with the group, speaking with individual participants away from the group, or, in the worst case, removing someone from the group. Lastly, you need to decide what will happen to the group chat after the program has ended. You may decide to leave the group open to provide ongoing support and updates, or you can close it. To do this in WhatsApp or Signal, you'll first need to remove each member of the group, then exit the group yourself and delete it. You may want to encourage participants to stay in touch for peer support via their own unfacilitated channels if that is appropriate. When business as usual becomes difficult, group messaging platforms allow child protection actors to keep talking to children and their families.